Kia ora Year 12 and Year 13. This video is going to go through quite a hard question from the 2019 Scholarship Calculus paper. It's a differential equations question, but it's one where you need to use a substitution technique to solve the problem. Well, at least that's how I solved the problem. And this is a technique that I typically haven't taught um, students at all. Um, and I confess that I hadn't looked at questions like this since about 1988. So I've put a link in here so that some of you can go and do some more practice. And it's to a really, really great maths website um, in the US from a guy called Paul Dawkins. And this is his tutorial page here. And it does quite a lot more with substitution questions like these. So usually um, at secondary school, the one technique that we've got for solving differential equations is separating the variables. And it's usually pretty obvious how to separate the variables. In this case, when you start trying to separate the variables in the usual way, you end up with y's and x's that aren't separating. So I'm going to show you kind of a first headbangy approach that doesn't work. And then I'm going to slowly go through how we can do substitution in this question so that it becomes quite easy. Now, the scholarship question did give you some clues on this. Um, it said the following techniques may prove helpful. A substitution for y could be made, for example, this. Right? But that clue, I think, is not going to be enough to get most of you through what you need to do with this question. So first we need to make a substitution, and we're also going to need to do a partial fractions breakdown. So if you're doing scholarship calc, it really is worth being confident with how to split things up using partial fractions. So you might want to go watch the five videos that I've done on those. I think they're either on the Scholarship Building Blocks website or else they're on my Cambridge um, Pure 3 playlist. Okay, so let's have a look at this thing and see what goes wrong. So we start out with 4x squared dy by dx is equal to y squared minus 2xy. The problem really is in here, but it's not just in here. If we can try, we, we can't do much with this. Um, we've got x's in here, and we could split this into y times y minus 2x. But then I've still got a problem, right? So I've got dy here, and I've got 4x squared here over dx here. So let's see what we can do. Well, we can, we can have the 1 over y here, dy. Right? I'm thinking out loud how I did it when I looked at this question this morning. right? So we've got 1 over y here, and then we've got y minus 2x here over 4x squared dx. Right? But this is trouble. So this is not working. So now we need to look at these hints and see if we can make sense of them. And I don't think most students will be able to make sense of them. But what we're going to do is we are going to do this substitution here. But we're going to spot it by first of all rearranging this by just getting dy by dx on its own. Okay, so this video might go over 15 minutes. Might have to do it in two bits. So we've got dy by dx on its own is equal to y squared minus 2xy over 4x squared. Now let's take that term by term. We've got y squared over 4x squared minus xy over 2x squared, and this simplifies. So that might start to give you an idea of how our substitution's going to work. Because what we're going to be doing is instead of working with y, we're going to do a substitution where we work with a function v. Right? And so we're going to say, let v of x, or we could have done u of x, let v of x equal y over x. And there's a whole family of differential equations where doing this substitution um, makes things go much, much better. And so to look at those, go have a look at this website here. Right, so we're rearranging this so that we've got dy by dx is equal to one quarter of y over x squared minus a half y over x. And so we're letting v of x equal y over x. So instead of working with y, I'm going to work with v. So y is equal to x times v of x. 
hopefully now you can see that these hints that they've given you really are quite helpful, right? So we're making a substitution for y, and this is it here. It just might have been a bit nicer if they could have written that as y over x is equal to u over x. So how do I link dy by dx with dv by dx? Well, I just need to use the chain rule, right? So dy by dx is going to equal x times dv by dx plus 1 times v, right, using the product rule. So instead of having any y's in my expression, I'm now shifting everything to be in terms of v, and things are about to get dramatically better. So here we have x times dv by dx plus v is equal to a quarter v squared, minus a half v. x times dv by dx is equal to a quarter v squared minus 3 over 2v, right, just cleaning up this. And now we've got something that looks separable, right? So I'll rewrite this side here as v squared minus 6v on 4. And here we've still got x times dv by dx. But we're back to something that looks utterly familiar, right? So you should be feeling pretty happy at this point because we're going to be able to, to solve this problem now. Okay, so where are we? Well, we've got 4 over v squared minus 6v dv is equal to 1 over x dx, right? We're going to do partial fractions on this. So let's do this now. So 4 over v squared minus 6v is equal to 4 over v times v minus 6. And that's equal to some constant over v plus some other constant over v minus 6. So we have to figure out what those constants are. Two ways we can do this. We can do it with matching or we can do it with substitution. Here we've got 4 is equal to a times v minus 6 plus b times v. Go watch the partial fractions videos, guys, if you are not confident with this. So this is a pretty easy partial fractions problem once you know how to do that. So we've got 4 is equal to negative 6a, giving me a is equal to negative 2 thirds. Right, and now we'll let v equal 4. So we get 4 is equal to, not 4, sorry, v is equal to 6. 4 is equal to 0 plus 6, whoops, 6b. Okay, so I'm substituting particular values of v into here to find these constants. So b is equal to 4 sixths or 2 thirds. So that means that I can go back up to here now and I can rewrite this integral. Okay, so backing up, this is where we've got to. Now we're going to rewrite this side and then um, integrate both sides. So we get negative 2 over 3v plus 2 over 3 times v minus 6 dv is equal to 1 over x dx. And you can see we've got no y's at all now. We've turned this problem totally into a problem about v or u. Now carefully integrating, we get negative two-thirds times the log of the absolute value of v plus two-thirds ln of v minus 6 is equal to the natural log of x plus c. Now I could write that as the natural log of x plus the natural log of c dash, which is equal to the natural log of c dash of x. That's just going to make things easier later on, and you should be familiar with that from your level 3 work. Right, so we're going to clean this up a little bit and then start substituting values in. So we get two-thirds of the natural log of v minus 6 over v is equal to the natural log of c dash of x. Um, I've got natural logs here and here, so if I pop this up to here, We've, we're good. We've got v minus 6 over v to the power of 2 thirds is equal to c dash of x. Now, we were told um, that one 
negative 6 is on the curve, but remember that negative 6 is a y value, right? So v is equal to y over x. But we've done all the hard work now, so we might as well go back to working with our y and x. So we'll substitute that back in now. Because ultimately, our job, remember, is to figure out, uh, we have to figure out the value of y when x is 4. But it would also be nice to just get a general solution here. Okay, so what have we got? Well, we've got y over x minus 6 divided by y over x is equal to c dash of x. And we know, what do we know? We know that 1, negative 6 is on the curve. So we can substitute in. We've got um, negative 6 minus 6 divided by negative 6 is equal to c dash times 1. So negative 12 over negative 6 gives me 2, so 2 is equal to c dash. I don't think that's right. I think I've lost a two-thirds somewhere. I have. I've lost my two-thirds there. That's better. Okay, so we've got 2 to the power of two-thirds is equal to c dash. Right, let's keep on going. We're going to get a general solution now. So um, y over x minus 6. Sorry, I'm going very slowly here. We've got this to the power of two-thirds is equal to two to the power of two-thirds x. And now we're going to put both sides to the power of two-thirds. So y over x minus six over y over x is equal to this, and that's to the power of three over two. So we have y over x minus six is equal to, multiplying through, y over x times 2x to the power of 3 over 2. So y minus 6x over x, what am I doing here? Is this right? I'm basically trying to get right through to y. So we've got is equal to 2yx to the power of a half. So y minus 6x is equal to 2yx to the power of 3 over 2. y minus 2y times x to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to 6x, giving me y into 1 minus 2x to the 3 over 2 is equal to 6x. Wow, we're just about there. So we didn't, you don't actually have to get a general solution here, but a, a particular solution here, but you might as well. Okay, so we've got y is equal to 6x over 1 minus 2, x to the 3 over 2. Finally, we're ready to figure out when x equals 4, what's y? So y will equal 24 over 1 minus 2 times 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Right, so that's 24 over 1 minus, so 4 cubed is 64, the square root of 64 is 8, so it's 1 minus 16, giving me y is equal to negative 24 over 15, which is negative 8 fifths, or the rather boring number of y equals negative 1.6. So there you go. Um, that question is, I think, well worth careful study. And that's only one example of how to do the y over x substitution, right? And it's a really, really nice technique. But I reckon if you haven't seen it before you hit it in a scholarship question, you may well have a little bit of a freak out moment. Um, so those clues, when you read them, when you understand those clues, especially the first one, it's kind of obvious, right? But I think it's the step that I think you're going to find hard in there is not so much this one, but it's this next step of seeing how that's going to help us. Okay, so I highly recommend this website. It's wonderful on lots of um, kind of advanced level three scholarship calc things and it is really really good on differential equations so um, go have a look at that thanks for watching i'll do some more scholarship questions later on this week